Oh, hi. My name is Andre. I'm a head of product here at PDFtron. Today, I'm going to talk to you about 3D PDFs and the future for the 3D standards inside of PDF document. Let's jump in. So when talking about 3D PDFs, it's really important just to go back in history of how 3D format came about in the first place in a PDF document. So just kind of stepping all the way back to 1990. So the portable document format is created in early 1990s. The PDFs are then rapidly adopted in all of the different verticals and use cases, including manufacturing, construction, and industrial applications. And then just right around 2005, some of the leaders in the space like Intel, Boeing, and Adobe come together to say, you know, hey, let's actually grab and standardize 3D format and set inside of PDF documents. And this was universal 3D, U3D format uh, with ECMA 363 script. So now the users in kind of manufacturing construction, they can pull up 3D models directly in the PDF documents and be able to open them. So the PDFs kind of act like a container for the 3D model. Then later, a PRC format support was introduced as well. So what can we do inside of PDF documents with 3D models? Well, we can first and foremost visualize them as well as support for kind of navigating the model. So I can rotate it around, I can jump to a specific views or select multiple different camera angles. So this really kind of helps me combine the 3D world together with some of the 2D specifications that could be available around the document just to kind of give me a bit of a context of what am I looking at. So in this case, you know, we're looking at a car suspension. Maybe there's, you know, a number of different parts that are going into it. So manufacturing is really becomes useful to kind of say, hey, uh, you know, this is all the different parts that comprise of the model and kind of make it happen. I can also kind of cut through the 3D model and kind of see all the different parts inside of it and a cross section of the model is very comes up quite a bit in the construction industry where you know when we're looking at the model we're looking at you know kind of the building of floor print or an architectural plan there could be architectural pipe or electrical kind of going through it so I want to kind of scan through it and section through it uh, one by one and be able to see okay what's actually behind those walls just to see how all of it comes together Another thing that I can do is let's, you know, refer back to the car suspension model here is that I can traverse the object model tree. So when a 3D designer puts together this model, they'll create different objects that can comprise of this model and they'll group it and they'll name it and provide like for each of the objects. So they will say, this is the brake disc, this is the rotor, this is the suspension link or absorber or shock absorber to help me visualize how those components could be behaving under movement or pressure or stress, uh, we can introduce 3D animations and they're supported inside of 3D PDF standard. And another thing too is kind of to bring all of it together, I'd be able to mark up or annotate just the same way I would be able to do on a PDF, but inside of 3D model, inside of a PDF document. So I can go ahead and place my markup comments or specific callouts to uh, bring someone's attention to that specific 3D part. I can also perform various measurements on the parts themselves just to figure out the distance between the different objects inside of this specific 3D model. One of the other confusing things that I find when it comes to 3D inside of a PDF is the fact that there are 3D annotations and then there's also 3D views. So far, the previous screen that I showed you, I showed you 3D annotate, uh, 3D view. Now, when talking about it, we can actually grab a PDF document and we will are able to go ahead and overlay, or I guess instead of just placing a comment, we can actually place a whole 3D model as the comment that would be a 3D annotation. So it's very similar feature support to the 3D view, except the 3D model is saved inside of the XFDF. And we also have the same format support as the 3D view, so we can support U3D and PRC. And again, it's not to be confused with annotating a 3D model in 3D view with annotation. It could get quite confusing. 
So what are the different use cases of 3D PDFs? So I already mentioned that um, it was rapidly adopted in manufacturing, construction, engineering. Um, however, there's a number of other applications uh, for 3D PDFs. And you know, I'll kind of go through them one by one. So uh, we've got manufacturing, construction, we've got medical, engineering, and geospatial uh, as well. So manufacturing can receive a PDF with specifications, material properties, and can clarify any questions uh, they might have around what type of material to use, uh, or any specific parts that need to be ordered, as well as there are any order numbers. Um, collaboration and product supply chain, and easily send it out for approval. Um, you can kind of quickly visualize it, collect everyone's feedback, and then uh, kind of move it to the next stage. And we can share that information with suppliers to see if they have any particular parts in stock um, based on our 3D uh, drawing. In construction, we can go beyond 2D format and also include a 3D model. So I can have a 2D uh, representation of the building floor print or architectural blueprint, but it can also include a 3D model visualization of it. And I'm able to toggle the walls and facilitate project takeoff use case where we can count the number of you know, object present in the model. For example, if we're just talking about, you know, uh, I've got my doors, I've got my windows, I've got my um, you know, number of toilets that I need to install in that specific building. Um, again, it can really kind of speed that part along. In the medical space, again, it enables us to converse with suppliers for things like dental implants, medical equipment, and so on. In engineering, we can visualize data simulations like heat flow, wind friction on a Formula One car, computational fluid dynamics, and so on. And it's not just the ability to have and display the 3D model, but also kind of create 3D animations inside of it um, to kind of further enhance and facilitate the story that kind of goes behind. Now, it feels like the 3D PDF format, it felt abandoned for a long time, but it's really making a comeback with the PDF 2.0, as well as 3D PDF Consortium joining just a few months ago. So really kind of welcome uh, the strong union between kind of the 3D organization together with the PDF organization, and just kind of seeing how we can advance those formats together. Right now for kind of the 3D PDF viewing or annotating collaboratively available for everybody, the only choice is Adobe Reader at the moment. And with Adobe Reader, because we're kind of dealing with uh, a number of different going into different views, it's a bit confusing with the user experience of having to switch between and having to have different tools or context available. And none of the open source rendering engines on the web today, they actually have support for 3D PDFs. And a lot of companies already standardize their processes on PDF. However, with a loss of 3D support or not ability to kind of scale their applications to the web or mobile and that missing link they have to look for something else as they're moving away from desktop applications now since there are a lot of companies who already standardized their processes on 3d pdf and you know set up their production set up their manufacturing um, and as you know we're scaling to web and everyone kind of moving towards web and mobile rather than having desktop applications um, there is no really a viable options out there. However, PDFtron's web viewer is going to be the first one to actually offer 3D PDF support in a web browser where the users can open it up and be able to interact uh, with the 3D models just the way they would inside of Adobe Reader and not having to rely on desktop applications uh, for this particular use. Let's take a look at some of the different alternatives to the 3D PDF. And you can just use the original 3D uh, model format. So what I'm talking about here is that the ability to go ahead and extract uh, the 3D model and your uh, U3D or PRC model and just kind of view it directly in whatever 3D rendering engine that we could be using. And the, there are pros to that. So you're no longer limited just to Adobe Reader for viewing. Um, and depending on the format, you might actually have easier time rendering it on a web or mobile. However, the context, the metadata, or any associated data with it is lost. And U3D and PRC itself 
you know, could contain a lot of information. However, a lot of information actually sits outside of the three um, 3D uh, model itself. It sits within kind of that PDF context around kind of the views that are available, the scene setup. And now we're also kind of introducing the inconsistencies in user experience between different viewing applications. If previously our users were used to using, you know, Adobe Reader for viewing those 3D PDFs, um, if now we send them just to the U3D or PRC, they might be confused about, you know, which application to open it with. Um, I believe on Windows you have a default 3D viewer, um, but on Mac it could be different. Um, so they could be confused about where to go to actually open the model itself. And then, you know, collaboration, again, is lacking there as well. And ability to provide comment and feedback on the panel. And the scene information might not carry over to other viewing applications. So let's say we're looking at it from a specific angle with a certain amount of lighting. That information will not carry over uh, to the you know, other viewers out there and they might have to reconfigure all of that. And I mean, another option is to continue using Adobe Reader. Um, the scene information is preserved. We get a bit of context of UX, although it's a bit confusing. Um, and the 3D viewing is just supported out of the box in the free version. Now, you know, there are some cons to that. So the security of actually downloading and storing the PDF locally when we're just trying to get the feedback um, together you know, on the document without necessarily having them to download the model or the PDF itself to be able to collaborate or annotate on top of it. And there's also, because they have to download and store the PDF locally, there's not a way to exercise a retention period uh, on that particular document. It doesn't self-destroy after a certain amount of time of being on the user's local file system. So let's actually take a look at a quick demo of uh, PDF Trans Web Viewer and ability to handle, well, 3D annotations. So ability to place a 3D annotation as a comment directly on a PDF. Okay, let's take a look. So here I have the Web Viewer running right in front of me and inside of the PDF Trans Web Viewer we have loaded a floor plan and inside of it, um, it's a floor plan of, well, one bedroom apartment with a den here. And what I wanna do is actually I want to be able to place some of the furniture that could be potentially used uh, and kind of collaborate where certain furniture models are going to be dropped directly into the PDF just to kind of showcase of where they're going to go. So I'll just go ahead and navigate to the insert menu, go over to the 3D and add the 3D object. And here I can actually pass the 3D object directly or I can choose a file and pick a, for example, a chair where I want to do it. And I'll go ahead and place that specific chair directly in the bedroom. And what I'm able to do is position it directly in the bedroom. And then I can also go ahead and rotate to kind of take a look at this uh, chair from all the different angles. And now, as you can see, my PDF is more than just a 2D file, more than just a 2D representation of floor plan. I'm really combining a number of different workflows here where I'm able to place a 3D model directly onto the PDF and it still kind of follows all the same kind of properties of you know, our annotation and collaboration. So I can say, this is the chair I was thinking of for our bedroom. So as you can see, there could be a number of different applications for you know, 3D PDF revival on web and provide users with the ability to kind of bridge those two worlds together and be able to you know, annotate and collaborate um, with the 3D models on a PDF. I really appreciate you watching this uh, presentation. Thank you so much for PDF Association for having us and I will see you all later.